Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Well today we're going to show you how to build a custom global footer. Here's the regular sort of footer that comes by default with Divi. There's the little categories bar that we showed you how to get rid of in a few videos ago. And there's the regular generic footer right there. We're going to turn that into something that looks like this. Very simple. Uh, you can really go to town with these. I'm keeping this pretty simple for today's. So let's get started. OK. Let's go to the dashboard. And once in the dashboard, we need to go down to Divi and to the theme builder right here. There's one I've created. Let's just get rid of that one. OK. And let's add a global footer. Just going to click on it. I'm going to say build global footer. I'm going to add a new row. And like I say, you can make this as complex or as simple as you actually want to do it. I'm going to keep mine fairly simple today. So I'm going to use a sort of row configuration like this. Two short ones on the outside and a longer one in the middle. Before I put anything in there, I'm going to give it the color background that I want. So I'm going to go into my section, blue tab for a section, green tab for a row, dark button for a module. I'm going to go into the section going to go down to background. I'm going to use a gradient for this today. We've got color, gradient, image or video. Click on the gradient. I'm going to add a gradient background. I'm going to use their generic blue and perhaps a black for that as well. Perfect. That works for me. OK, well, let's start adding our modules now, hitting the little dark button to add a new module. I'm going to use an image and I'm going to put in a light version of my logo on the left hand side here. Like I said earlier, you can go to town, make this your own, put whatever you want, wherever you want it. So I've got a white version of my logo there. OK, that's great. We'll be readjusting these in a minute. In the middle, which is a longer section, I'm going to put a little menu and a copyright notice. And when we're done, I'm going to stretch this whole row out so it fills out the bottom. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go down to menus. Right there. And you can select any of your menus that you've got saved. That one's fine for me. The top menu, home services, is about contact. What I want to do is go over to design, layout. I'm going to pop mine in the middle. At the moment, it's left aligned by default. So I'm going to put mine center. Fantastic. And I've got no drop down menu, but had you some drop down sub items here, you could choose whether you wanted them to drop down below or upwards. If you have a lot of them, they're going to drop down below the footer. I'd suggest doing it upwards, but I don't have any sub menu items for this particular one. OK, I want to get rid of that background and I want to make that writing light in color. So if we go to content, there's we'll find the background. I'm just going to hit the little trash can there to get rid of it. And let's go to our design tab, menu text, and I'm going to give it a light color. You can give it active link covers for the page you want there. You can change the font here. And like I've said before, Divi has a crazy amount of fonts. If you want to change it, just go in there, hover over one, and it'll give you an example of what they've got. I'm going to leave mine just as it is on the default. I think I will capitalize it though. And I think I'll make it slightly bigger. Menu text size. I'm just going to slide that up a little bit. Yeah, that works for me fine. OK, underneath that, I'm going to put a little copyright statement. And to do this, I'm going to use something called dynamic content, which is pretty handy. So again, I'm going to hit the little dark button to add a new module. I'm going to go right down to the bottom. And as you can see, Divi comes with a Massive amount of modules here, plenty enough to build just about any site. And if you're using WooCommerce, you'll get another dozen or so to display your products with. So I'm going to use a text module for this. There it is. I'm going to simply select this and delete it all. Like I say, I'm going to use dynamic content. What dynamic content does is pulls for the database. That way I can put a date in for my copyright statement and it'll change every year to the correct year. So I'm going to say dynamic content. I'm going to say date, current date. Now just to make this easier, I'm going to hold on to that. I'll make that text light so you can see it. 
there we go that's a bit better let's go back to our content now now for our dynamic content let's go back in there before it i want to say copyright and then i'm going to put the copyright symbol which is what they call an alt code so if you hold down your alt button and hit 0169 you get a copyright symbol there we go now i want to put a space there because the, the date's actually too close to it but i don't want the february and i don't want the 19th i just want the year so if we go down a little bit date format we can select custom there's these variations here but it doesn't include just the year for just the year i'm going to go in there i'm going to put in a capital y if you put a lowercase y in it'll just give you the last 22. so we got copyright 2022 and that will change each year which is kind of handy now after i'm going to put a little gap and i'm going to put my company name and you can put something like all rights reserved or whatever it is you like to say so we've got the statement copyright copyright symbol 2022 which will change dynamically each year system 22 all rights reserved let's just pop it over into the middle so i'm going to save that and go over to my design here's our text again let's roll on down and here's text alignment great that'll work for me and over in my right column like i said i'm keeping this very simple you can put whatever you want again let's perhaps have some social media icons and if we roll down there's a social media follow button there by default it puts in a facebook and a twitter simply go in there and add the link to your facebook page or whatever one it is just pop your link in there when you're happy just hit save so we've got facebook twitter let's add a couple more i'm going to add another one we'll select what network let's go for youtube okay, it's alphabetically ordered here there's youtube and let's add one more let's go for instagram there we go and by default they're the default colors of those sites there but if you want to you can go into the design and change the colors of the icons here but i'm going to leave mine just as it is that works for me okay well let's save this don't forget to put your links in there to your pages that way they when they click on it it'll take them to the appropriate pages for you so i'm going to save that now let's make this row full width and we'll have to make some adjustments once i've done that so green tab for the row let's go in there to make it full width to go over to the design i'm going to go to sizing where it says width i'm going to pull that up so it says 100 percent i'm going to copy that 100 percent control c i'm going to paste it in the max width down below control v to paste as you can see we've got a full width row there now my logo is way too big so i'm going to resize that i want to put a bit of space either side on my row so it's not quite butted up against the sides there so while we're in the row still in design let's close up sizing we'll go down to spacing left and right i'm going to put 10 and percent in there because whatever size screen i want it to be 10 percent of whatever screen we're looking at so let's go 10 percent and let's do the same on the right just hit the little chain it'll do the right hand side fantastic okay well let's make that little logo the size that we actually want it so i'm going to go in there i'm going to go to design sizing i'm going to pull it down to about the size that i want it something like that and let's pop it in the middle of the row that'll work for me now everything's pretty much looking how i want it now but i've got too much i don't want it to be quite as high as this so let's I'm just going to hover over my little menu row there. If you go down, you'll see that gray area. You can just left click. You can bring the padding up a little bit so those are closer together. That works for me there. And let's take a bit of padding away from our section. You can do it the same way by just clicking on the section and dragging it up when you've got the 
panning there. And the same for the top bit. I'm just left clicking and dragging. So get it to the size you want it. This one I think I can bring down just a little bit. We'll go into this module and we'll just bring that down slightly. Like I say, this is a very simplified version of it. You can really go to town with several different sections and links and things. But this is how to create your own custom footer. When you're happy, little purple button down the bottom. Save the changes. Hit the little check mark in the top right hand side of the page. Save the changes. Let's go to our page here. There's our original when I refresh. It's replaced it with our new little footer down there. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a little custom footer for your Divi theme website. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.